But the person of the Holy Spirit is in the earth. He moves upon people. He moves upon great congregations. And it is really the power of the Holy Spirit. It is really the person of the Holy Spirit that people feel when they talk about this tingling power that's going through their bodies. When they talk about this great heat upon their bodies, you've heard them, scores of them, as they give witness to the healing virtue, the healing power, when they give their testimony regarding the healing of their sick bodies. You come in the service, you weep, and you wonder why you weep. You don't understand it. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit that you really feel. People don't understand the slaying power of the Holy Ghost. Neither do I understand it. I'm trying to tell you. I'm the first one to admit I do not understand the slaying power of the Holy Spirit. I see them before me, slain by this great unseen power, this great unseen force. And I know better than anyone else that I have nothing to do with it, absolutely nothing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Sitting next to me is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. So today we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit once again. We've done several videos on the Holy Spirit, but today we're going to focus on the errant teachings. Very, uh, that very, very errant teachings. Very errant. Verant. <laughs> Verant. <laughs> Verant teachings on the Holy Spirit. And we've got several clips for you. We've got we clips do. from the late Miles Monroe. We've got clips from Kenneth Co We've got a clip from Cl Kenneth Copeland. Todd White. Todd White and some others. So we're going to uh, be looking at what the teachers, some of the most popular teachers have taught or mm. are teaching about the Holy Spirit today. Right. So we're going to... This all started when mm -hmm. we um, found a survey done by Barna at the end of yes. August, um, asking people who profess to be Christians what they thought about different topics mm -hmm. um, about the Lord. And one of the questions had to do with the Holy Spirit. Now, one of those groups of people was known as the um, integrated disciple. That would probably be like you and I, mm -hmm. like we live our lives according to God's word. The Bible is our worldview. 39% of that group of people thought that the Holy Spirit was a symbol of God's power, did yeah. not recognize the Holy Spirit as a person of the Trinity. Yeah, and unfortunately, that seems to be something that's pretty common um, among uh, even like the, the this first clip we're going to show you, which is by a group of people called the Bible Project. Now, I've never heard of the Bible Project no, before. They seem to be a YouTube a uh, group that does short videos on mm -hmm. Bible topics yeah. that you can look up. So you think, oh, great, let yeah. me learn about the Holy Spirit. And th what they do is they animate these videos. Now, they, they've got, uh, I went on the Red's website, and they've got, I, I, I mean, just tons of videos on there. And you would think something like the Bible Project would be really, really good. Good. You, I mean, kind of you, adhere to the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm watching their video on the Holy Spirit. Robin actually is the one that found it, and we're watching it together. And well, let's first of all play the video for you, and then we'll talk, then we'll about, talk about what it. we uh, what we think about it. Okay. So this is uh, the Bible Project on the Holy Spirit. If you've ever heard the phrase, the Holy Spirit, and you want to know what it means, where do you start? Well, you have to start on page one of the Bible, where the uncreated world is depicted as this dark, chaotic place. But then above the chaos, God's Spirit is there, hovering, ready to bring about life and order and beauty. Okay, but... What is God's Spirit? Yeah, so the Spirit is the way the biblical authors talk about God's personal presence. The Hebrew word is ruach. Ruach. Yeah, you gotta clear your throat at the end. 
So what is it? Well, ruach can refer to a number of different things, but what they all have in common is energy. Energy? How so? So there's an invisible energy that makes the clouds move or the tree branches sway. Right. Wind. So in Hebrew, that's ruach. Okay. Now take a big breath. (sighs) So you feel that inside you. Yeah, the air? Well, specifically the energy, right? The vitality in your body that you get from breathing deeply. That, too, is ruach. And this is the same word used in the Bible to describe God's personal presence. So God's personal presence is what they are saying that the Holy Spirit is. They never refer to the Holy Spirit as as God. God. They never refer to him as him. And that's that's a pet peeve of mine. When you listen to, to preachers talk about the Holy Spirit, a lot of times he's referred to as it. As an it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But think about it, Robin, God's personal presence, not God, uh, not God himself, not third person of the Trinity. It reminds me of a Jehovah's Witness Mm, um, kind of definition. And I have the Jehovah's Witness definition of the Holy Spirit. This is from their website. They said the Bible's use of Holy Spirit indicates that it, it is a controlled force that Jehovah God uses to accomplish a variety of his purposes. To a certain extent, it can be likened to electricity, a force that can be adapted to perform a great variety of operations. Yeah. So they taught, they teach that the Holy Spirit is God's personal active force in the world. And it's very interesting that they use electricity because when you look at some of the videos of, um, uh, you know, people who are describing their experience with the Holy Spirit, people in the charismatic movement, they often say, well, you know, it was something like electricity going through me. Mark this man, Lord, for the works of ministry. There he is. Father, the Holy Ghost on you. It just, you know, my, my hands were tingling and I felt like electricity. As a matter of fact, you're going to hear Todd White, I think, say something similar He's to that. Talk about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Robin, um, uh, one of the things that really aggravated me about, uh, like, like I said, the whole Bible project. And by the way, they have, uh, like, I think over a million subscribers um, uh, on their YouTube channel. And uh, their website, like I said, is is pretty intense. It's got a lot of videos on it. Uh, but one of the things, like I said, that, that, that just really got me is the idea that they, they, they didn't even call the Holy Spirit God and they they said that he was God's personal presence, but that's not what scripture says. Right. And we've got some uh, passages of scripture that totally... Um, you know, debunk that idea. Yeah, they talk about the Holy Spirit as God. So I'm going to be reading from Acts 5, starting in verse 1. But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of that land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. So Ananias falls dead, and we read after that, because he had not lied to man, but to God when he lied to the Holy Spirit. Very clear. We also have Acts chapter 13, starting in verse 1 uh, and going on through verse 3. Now there was, now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, and Cyrene, a manan, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. So electricity does not speak. No, electricity doesn't speak. God's personal presence, uh, I guess, is what, you know, how how the Bible project um describe the Holy Spirit, I guess, you know, or, or, or his energy. They, what did they call an energetic, an energy his energy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, the Holy Spirit is God. He had, when he, you know, he speaks, he uses mm-hmm. personal pronouns, I, me. And uh, I actually brought that up one time with the Jehovah's witness when I was talking to them. And right. if I remember correctly in the new world translation, which is the Jehovah's witness Bible, 
in Acts chapter 13, it says it's very similar to way to the way the ESV uh, uh, reads. So it, it does the Holy Spirit is speaking. And I asked the lady when I was because I read it from her Bible and I said, how does a how does God's personal force say set apart for me, right. Barnabas and Saul, to the work which I have called them? And she mm -hmm. said, well, I'll just have to talk to my um, elders about it. So, mm. you know, anyway. Um, so that is uh, the Bible project. Yeah, let's do a little bit of Miles Monroe. So here is a video on Miles Monroe, and my wife sat through the hmm. entire. <laughs> He's something else. Video. He was something else. And we just took a few clips. We're not going to uh we're not going to play we're not going to torture you and play the entire video. Mm. I'm she's a saint. Mm. So anyway, well, let's uh go ahead and watch Miles Monroe. He's going to say something here that uh I think um He's going to say a few things. He's going to say a few Very things. Off. But wait till you see why he says Jesus came to earth. His power is going to flow. Most important person Therefore, on earth is the Holy Spirit. And the key to life on earth is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus came to earth to bring mankind the Holy Spirit. Therefore, this was the ultimate purpose and goal of Christ coming to earth was the Holy Spirit. And the goal of God is not to take us where he is, but to come where we are. So that's Ooh, just an, yeah. <laughs> what? So that's just an example of some really, really bad teaching. And and you I know, think, can we talk about the the first really upsetting thing he said that Jesus came to Earth to bring us the Holy Spirit? I thought that Jesus came to Earth for other reasons. Uh, yeah, like uh, to seek and to save the lost. <laughs> I mean, to right. save mankind, uh, to die on a cross and pay the penalty for our sins, to rise again for us, to to forgive us. Yeah, that's that's Mark nothing 10, like that. There, forty five. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. Luke nineteen ten. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. I think we have another one. Oh, Matthew mm -hmm. 5, 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. First Timothy 1, 15. Mm. Th this saying, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world, not to bring us the Holy Spirit, but to save sinners of whom I am mm. the foremost. And then this is, this is my absolute favorite. First Corinthians 15, three through five, for I have delivered to you as of first importance that I, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas then to yeah. the 12. Yeah. So, so please leave a little note for us on which one of his <laughs> comments about the Holy Spirit disturbed you the most. Yeah. I know at the end he said that God the Father does not want us to come to him, but he wants to yeah. come to us. And I know there are verses that say, like, God will dwell among men. Mm -hmm. And we do know that God comes to us to bring us his gifts, his gifts of uh, forgiveness and repentance in, in his word and sacraments. But we also have God's ultimate goal. And what is God's ultimate goal? And that would be to bring us to him. To heaven. Um, so John 14, verse starting in verse 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Yeah, so that is, so the purpose of God, you know, it's wonderful. The, the Holy Spirit is given to every single believer. Every The moment a person places faith in Christ, which, by the way, faith is a gift. Faith is something that is given to us. It's not mm -hmm. something that we muster up within our, you know, inside of us. It's something that is given to us as a gift. When we place that faith in Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit right then and there. And so um, that that's a beautiful thing. But the but there would be none of that unless Christ came to earth to save sinners, to save us, to die and bleed on a cross right. for our sins. Right. And he actually wanted to give us the Holy Spirit when he left so that we would have that other mm -hmm. comforter. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm.
All I right. think we have one more miles yeah. to go through. Do you want to go through another miles? Yes. Okay, here we go. Of the king. The culture of the king. The attitude of the king. The lifestyle of the king. The food of the king. The drink of the king. Until when you visit the territory, you may think you are in the kingdom headquarters. Who is the most important person in that process? The governor. And so I introduced this series by telling you the value of the governor. The most important person on earth is the governor. The Holy Spirit. He was sent from the king. He said, Jesus said, I will send you another. I will send you. My father will send you another and he will be with you and he will re remain with you lord help me see he said i'm the king i can come and go but the governor is gonna stay number two the most important thing man lost was the governor when adam sinned the governor left we became an independent heaven colony. And when you are independent, you got to pay your own bills, pave your own roads, make your own life. You got to survive by your own wits. And that's why man has been messing this planet up because he's been trying to run God's territory without God. Wow. So what are we talking about here, Robin? We're talking so about the governor. What the is governor that talking about? Miles um, was in the Bahamas and they have a governor. So he was trying to use that metaphor to describe how the Holy Spirit reigns over us now that God the Father has left. Yeah. Even though he said that when Adam sinned, did the he Holy just Spirit say that? Left, yes. The Holy Spirit left, mm -hmm. which I haven't found yet in the Bible. Yeah, it's not in the Bible at all. There's nothing in Scripture that even comes close to that. So why don't we move on to some Kenneth Copeland now? Do you think folks are ready for that? Can you stomach it? <laughs> let's do it. Let's power through. All right, let's uh, talk about Kenneth Copeland. He's going to mention the baptism of the Holy Spirit here. Okay. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is the ministry of the Spirit of God in supernatural manifestation in the life of born again people people ministering to and people receiving from on the same supernatural level in which jesus ministered while he was on the earth so this is a this is classic word of faith um, yeah. prosperity or word of faith theology. I mean, well, you can't have the prosperity gospel without word of faith, but it is classic word of faith theology. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that uh, is really errant in the charismatic church, especially when they teach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is they they make it a separate thing. They make the baptism mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, first you're a Christian. First you're saved. You know you and you, you receive the Holy and you Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit saved. when you're saved. Mm -hmm. But then after you know at some point in time, you know you're struggling. You're having a tough time. You're you're really um, you know uh, you're not living your Christian life like you'd like to live your Christian life. And so you uh, you know now you need something more. You need that baptism you know, of the Holy Spirit. Off, right. Yeah. So you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then you begin to have you know you begin to speak in tongues and, and you begin to do other so that's when copeland says kids. that once you receive the baptism of the holy spirit then you can do supernatural acts mm -hmm. just like jesus did them yes. okay anyway so um anyway that's that's just that's enough so of bad. that i no, think we haven't did you want to talk more about that i do one? want to talk about the okay. baptism of the holy spirit for a minute because sure. i i i just want folks to know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is yes. not a separate thing from salvation. The, we are baptized, uh, you know, the, the moment we place faith in Christ, the, that's mm -hmm. when we receive the Holy Spirit. I, I want to go to a couple Some of verses. verses here. Start I have Acts up. 
Yeah, put Acts, Acts chapter, chapter 2. two yeah. Verse 38 says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent and be baptized, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This um, is a really important one in Acts 11. Mm. I've got... um starting in verse 11 yep. and do you want to talk about this before i read it what was going yeah. on here yeah so we have a situation in acts chapter 11 where peter is uh discussing what took place in the previous chapter where he went and saw cornelius and mm -hmm. it was peter who actually is the one who brought the gospel first to the gentiles uh and so right peter goes into the home of Cor cornelius who is a gentile and he preaches the word of god he preaches the gospel and the holy spirit falls on the group of gentile believers and um in acts chapter 11 those who he's given this report to they're pretty angry with him because he went as a jew into the home of a gentile and so that's kind of where our story the, here picks up that's the background mm -hmm. um and so peter is speaking and the spirit told me to go with them making no distinction these six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house and he told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and said send to joppa and bring simon who is called peter he will declare to you a message by which you will be saved you and all your household and i began to speak the holy spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning and i remembered the word of the lord how he said john baptized with water but you will be baptized with the holy spirit if then god gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the lord jesus christ who was i that i could stand in god's way i want to talk about the connection here between when uh the baptism of the holy spirit and believed all right look at that one more time i'm gonna i'm gonna just put that verse up one more time and this is what it says it's it he says this um and i remembered the word of the lord mm -hmm. how he said how he said john baptized with water but you will be baptized with the holy spirit so he's remembering all that and then he says if then god gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the lord jesus who was I that I could stand in God's way. So he's equating faith and the baptism of the Holy Spirit right then the moment you believe that is when you receive the Holy Spirit and that is the baptism of the Holy yes. Spirit. You get it all when you're saved. There's no... Uh, There's no waiting around for no a second helping. No. And, I've got also 1 Corinthians 12. Do you yeah, want me to read that one? Please do. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. So folks, we get the Holy Spirit, all of him the moment we believe this the is whole not holy spirit this is not something mm -hmm. that is separate from our salvation so i'm glad you found that kenneth copeland clip yeah i think we have another kenneth oh, copeland do clip. we have to do it we do do we get have a to? rolling Here danny hallelujah now he's not going to push it on you the holy spirit is the perfect He'll never push it on it, but I want you to know he's ready if you act. He's ready when you begin to call things and be not as though they were. He is ready because he's the spirit of truth. And you put you put him to work for you, he'll lead and guide you on to all the truth. He's your comforter. He's your comforter. Put he'll lead him and guide to you. work for you. How did how did that work for Kenneth Copeland when he was uh, trying to get rid of the coronavirus? <laughs> he was trying to... <laughs> Speak to the coronavirus. I'm exercise judgment right now. Because we in have... In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office of the prophet of God, I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, I execute judgment on you, oh. Satan. You destroyer. You killer. You get out. You break your power. Just Did, the fact that a man would say, let's put God to work for me. Yeah. 
yeah, that's just very again. It's it's word of faith teaching, and we've yes, done a whole video on the word of faith movement. So, all right, it's terrible. This is uh, speaking of terrible, Danny. Who's up next? So we have Todd White, um, and this is a testimony of Todd White how he received the baptism of fire. Now, um, this is um, this is not, folks. This is not the Holy Spirit. What Todd White is going to describe to you is not the Holy Spirit. John, John the Baptist, in Matthew 3, says, I baptize you with water, but the one coming after me, he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. And my thing was, what is and fire? I got to know what and fire is. Like, because I knew that I had Jesus. I knew that I was born again. I knew that my salvation was secure, but something was missing. And so I'm like, I got to know what this is. So I go up there, and the guy's talking about healing, and he talks just like this all the time. Yes, and then the Lord does this and that. He doesn't raise his voice, so I just real, just real, looks like a real gentle person. Randy. And then, and then the Lord did this and that, and then healing comes when this and that. And I'm sitting there going... I just, gosh, I just, what is this? And fire. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes this heat. I have prayed for over 900 people without one breakthrough. Not one manifested healing. Everybody told me to quit, but I'm not quitting. Because this thing's forever. I'm going after it. Sitting in the seat, right next to a pre-med student who's my friend. And this guy, he goes, you okay? And I'm sweating. Kind of like right now, but in a matter of three or four seconds. He goes, are you okay? Do you have numbness in your left arm? I'm like, no. I'm like, well, is it hot? No, no, no. Well, what's wrong? I, I, don't, I don't know. What's going on? All of a sudden, this guy, Randy, he looks at me out of all the 1,700 people, and he goes, son, he goes, you've been asking the Lord for a baptism of fire, haven't you? He goes, yeah, you. I went, he goes, stand up. Who? Oh. He says, stand up. The Lord says, it's right now. All of a sudden, this thing hit me. Oh. And it felt like my chest was being stepped on. Are you sure you want this? See, it, it, felt, like, it felt like I was going to die. It felt like electricity. Not just in my hands. It was all over my body. It started to go through my feet and through my fingers. And all of a sudden, it hit me. I'm like, oh. And it wasn't like I was going to say, people were going to say, be quiet. Uh, I said, oh. Randy says, more, Lord. Just like that. I'm not kidding. Can I have the worship team up here? Can everybody come up here, please? I knelt down in between the seats. And this thing that I've been crying out for, this thing that I've been focusing on, this thing that I didn't even know what it was, that quart of gasoline with the match, because God's the one that lights the match. This quart is all of a sudden on me. And all of a sudden I'm just, help! No! Ah! I'm screaming. Those of you that want to be dignified and all pretty. Look, what if this happened in the middle of Walmart? What if this happened in the middle of your family reunion? What if this happened at your... Do you know, I just, if I'm a person that believes that, I feel like I'm really missing out if I have not experienced that's a good point. that kind of extraordinary mm -hmm. baptism of the Holy Spirit. To me, though, that's pretty freaky. Um, yeah. I can tell you right now, folks, that is not the Holy Spirit. Todd White was experiencing, if, he, if he's telling the truth here, he was experiencing something that was um, actually demonic because the Holy Spirit Who does not. Who was the man that was doing it? Will you talk about that for a minute, Randy? So that was Randy Clark. Randy Clark is the one who Todd White is talking about. And Randy Clark is the one who started the Toronto Blessing. And he brought this garbage back from the Toronto Blessing. Steve Kozar did a video about Randy Clark and his antics. Uh, yeah. Randy Clark is founder of Global Awakening, a very large New Apostolic Reformation organization. His terrifying 18-second video is what he calls Holy Spirit Invasion. Here's the post of the video on the Global Awakening Facebook page.
Randy Clark wants you to see this. But he doesn't want you to see the following Bible verse. He immediately removed it and blocked me from commenting. Mark 9.20 They brought the boy to him. When he saw him, immediately the demonic spirit threw him into a convulsion, and falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. time people behaved this way in the Bible is when they were tormented or possessed by demons. Uh, Horrible and, antics. And, and so, folks, nowhere in Scripture, nowhere in Scripture do you find the Holy Spirit ever doing that. It makes the Holy Spirit out to be this violent thing. And, uh, you know, like Copeland in the last clip we saw said, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. You and I were talking, and I think it was um, uh, the other day when we were talking about this, it's ironic that Copeland calls the Holy Spirit a gentleman, but then you have Rodney Howard Brown, I believe, who says that the Holy Spirit uh, is not a gentleman, and he might, uh, you know, throw you on the floor, throw you across the room. Folks, that is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not do that, and we see Paul teaching that in 1 Corinthians. Yeah, if we think about our God, our dignified, orderly, sovereign, majestic, uh, pure, holy God, the Holy Spirit is all of that. So mm -hmm. would the Holy Spirit do no. this craziness? No, and we are to be dignified. We as Christians are orderly. to be orderly mm. and dignified. We're not Worship. to act like this. And you Modest. look at Yeah, mm. and you look at what Galatians says. Galatians talks about one of the fruit of the the, the fruit of the spirit being self-control. And yeah. these guys are not experiencing no. self-control. None of that is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I think we're in agreement that the Bible is just full of verses that talk about the deity of the Holy Spirit yeah. and the personhood of the Holy Spirit. And we have lists of them. You can look up a website mm -hmm. that shares them all with you. If you want to share some of those, please feel free to do that. But yeah. folks, the Holy Spirit, there's no way that what Todd White experienced was the Holy Spirit. And what Todd, what Miles Monroe said, is not the Holy Spirit. What Kenneth Copeland talked about is right. not a biblical view of the Holy Spirit. And unfortunately, right. when you go throughout YouTube and you just type in the Holy Spirit, it's like, uh, you know, nobody reads their Bible anymore. It's like a circus. You know? I mean, you have great videos. You got you got videos that'll come up with R.C. Sproul, John MacArthur, um, and others that are out there that are talking about the Holy Spirit, you, you know, and, and they, they have some, some really good solid, uh, you know, uh, teaching that they do backed up by scripture but you, the, when you look at most care and i'm sorry to say this and i'm not trying to be mean but when you look at most of the charismatic pastors and teachers they have a uh very errant view uh on the holy spirit mm -hmm. So anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching. Um, and, um, you know, that's our little spiel on the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, uh, we will see you next week.